In the fast-paced flow of modern life, there is always a hard truth that we can't escape. Get away from stress and worry, especially during the hardest times. This is not only a deep-seated struggle for everyone, but also a major enemy in the fight against mental illness. Statistics aren't the only thing that show this hard truth. More than 70% of adults in the U.S. say they regularly deal with strong emotions. This is a warning sign of a mental health crisis that is getting worse in the worst times, like when we lose a loved one or fail after years of trying and failing. Haven't you ever wished you could find a bright spot in the dark web of chaos and bring your soul back to the shores of peace? Stoic philosophy, which has a lot of history and tradition, is like a flashlight that helps us see through the thick fog of worry and loss. Stoic philosophy not only helps us figure out what's important in life, but it also gives us the keys to self-control and inner peace. Today, we'll be looking at some of the most important lessons from this philosophy. Each one has the power to help you deal with stress and anxiety, so come along for the ride. You'll find that each step is not only a relief from stress, but also a steady step toward peace and the ability to get through hard times. Are you ready to start your path to mental freedom? If so, let's begin with the first lesson. Lesson number one focus on virtue. We need to face the fact that worry and fear often rule the human mind. When we face problems like loss of a loved one, changes in the economy or social unrest, we need to look for comfort and strength to get through them. Stoic theory, at its core, offers a strong way out. Think about virtue. Virtue isn't just a moral idea, it's also a way to deal with and lessen stress in our lives while building a strong and peaceful soul. Stoic philosopher and Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius once said, don't waste time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. He was talking about virtue. He tells us that problems come from both outside sources and how we respond to them. A good person not only stays calm and believes in God, but also knows what the right thing to do is. This takes a mix of knowledge and faith. Courage and self-control for justice. When you think of the core traits of Stoicism, you should first think of wisdom. One of the four main traits of Stoicism is wisdom, which is more than just knowing a lot. It also means being able to see and accept life's lessons when things are hard. Wisdom not only helps us figure out what events mean and how to respond to them, but it also teaches us how to be wise and calm. When we realize that we can't control everything that happens, we start to learn not to worry needlessly, which can upset our inner peace. Stoic wisdom practice means learning to tell the difference between things that can be changed and things that can't. This helps us focus on improving ourselves and how to deal with problems. Next is fairness, a virtue that has to do with being fair and treating everyone the same in a world full of unfairness and strife. Being fair can help us build a strong and helpful community. When we act fairly, we not only improve our relationships with other people, but we also boost our own self-esteem and confidence when things get tough. A fair approach helps us look at things objectively, which cuts down on worry and negative thoughts that aren't necessary. The third virtue is not just being brave in dangerous situations, it also means being able to deal with fear and doubt when things get tough. Fear can get in the way of us acting or making important choices, Stoic bravery is not not being afraid, but being able to get past it. Courage helps us stick to our values and do the right thing even when things get tough. It also helps us face challenges without giving up, even when there is resistance or trouble. Finally, self-control means being able to handle your feelings and wants when things get tough. It's easy for bad feelings to take over, Self-control means not only being able to handle your feelings well, but also being in charge of your actions and decisions. 
It helps you stay calm and stops your feelings from taking over your reasoning. This helps us make smart choices and stay away from acts done quickly that could cause regret. Later, we'll talk about Alice, who successfully applied these lessons to her life. Alice worked at a tech company that was dealing with anxiety after the pandemic. When her company had trouble applying stoic teachings, Alice worked on building her virtues. Alice knew enough to accept that some things, like the economy and choices made by the government, were she didn't worry about things she couldn't change. Instead, she worked on improving her skills and adding to her projects. Even though her workplace is stressful, she is fair by listening to and helping her co-workers. Keeping a fair attitude during tough talks, which she shows Alice shows. Courage by standing firm on her beliefs when under pressure. She also shows restraint by avoiding working extra hours that aren't necessary and making time for her favourite activities and her own health. This helps her stay calm and make decisions without much stress. It also makes her a reliable and helpful co-worker. As we develop and nurture these virtues, we not only get better when we face problems, but we also learn how to live a less stressful and more peaceful life. Stoicism doesn't promise a life without problems, but it does give us the tools to deal with those problems in a smart and calm way. By focusing on virtues, we not only build a strong base for ourselves, but we also spread peace and harmony to those around us, making society stronger and more stable no matter what. If you agree, leave a comment about practicing virtue-focused Many philosophical and moral theories are based on the idea of virtue, which is often thought of as moral excellence. The focus on virtue means developing traits that lead to good behavior, social unity, and the flourishing of people. Morally good traits or abilities are called virtues, and they are seen as the basis for a good moral life. This way of thinking comes from very old theories, like those of Aristotle, Confucius, and other classical thinkers who stress the importance of developing good character as a key part of living a good life. How to understand virtue There are things that people should have that are morally good and desired. These are called virtues. Some examples are being truthful, brave, caring, having ethics, and being wise. People believe that virtuous behavior is the most important part of living an ethical life and growing as a person. Historical Points of View Aristotle talked a lot about the golden mean, which says that virtue lies between two extremes of too much and too little. For instance, bravery is a middle ground between being careless and being afraid. Confucius said that traits like kindness, honesty, courtesy, wisdom, and loyalty were important for getting along with others and improving oneself. What role does virtue play in personal growth? Focusing on virtue means always trying to get better and putting these traits into practice in your daily life. Being self-aware and reflecting on your life are necessary to see your strengths and places where you can improve. By making sure that actions are in line with moral principles, personal virtues add to overall happiness and well-being. Being good in society. Virtues affect more than just one person. They also affect groups of people. They help people in communities believe each other, work together, and respect each other. Societies that value and encourage good behavior tend to be stronger and stick together longer. Civic values, like fairness, justice, and respect for others, are very important for a society to work and be fair. How to grow Virtue Developing character is a lifelong process that includes learning, doing, and thinking about what you've done. Inspiring and guiding good behavior can be done with the help of role models and teachers. Setting personal goals for virtue, asking for feedback, and making surroundings that support moral behavior are all practical steps that can be taken. A classic way to think about personal and society ethics is to focus on virtue. 
It stresses the importance of building moral character and traits that help people be happy and live in peace with others. People can live more meaningful and moral lives by understanding and practicing virtues, which has a good effect on the community as a whole. Lesson number two. Accept change and look for the positive aspects. When things are going badly, we often feel anxious and uneasy because of sudden changes and problems. This is when the teachings of Epicurus and Marcus Aelius really hit home, because they say that the best way to deal with anxiety is not to fight it, but to learn to accept it and look for the good in every situation. First, we need to accept that change is a natural part of life. Instead of trying to control it, we should work on changing how we react and feel about it. When we accept that things will change, we feel less anxious and uneasy. For example, let's say you are running a long-distance race and the weather changes a lot during the race, from bright sunshine to heavy rain and strong winds. At first, changes in the weather might make you feel down and worried, but you choose to accept them and look for the good in them. You realize that the rain can make the race more exciting and difficult, so you adjust your pace and skills to get through each challenge. This not only helps you deal with change calmly, but it also helps you improve your athletic skills. Furthermore, we need to remember that seeking positive aspects in every city situation is not blind optimism. It requires a practical and proactive approach to life. When you're stuck in morning traffic, you may feel frustrated and worried about being late, but instead of getting angry and stressed, you can use the time in your car to relax and enjoy music or audiobooks that you like. You realize that this is a rare opportunity to unwind and escape. From the daily hustle and bustle when you arrive with a relaxed mindset, you not only reduce anxiety, but also feel refreshed and ready to face the challenges of the workday. In any difficult situation, there are always lessons to learn and opportunities to grow. Let's consider every challenge as an opportunity to cultivate virtues and resilience when we focus on finding and harnessing the positive aspects. We not only reduce worry, but also develop inner strength. Finally, we need to understand that Stoicism is not about rejecting emotions or in difficulties. Instead, it is a method to learn how to confront and overcome challenges. Accepting change and looking for the good in it not only helps us feel less anxious, it's also an important part of our personal and spiritual growth. This shows how strong and deep Stoic philosophy is when applied to real life. As Epicus wrote, we can't change the things that happen to us, but we can always choose how to react to them. This is an important part of the Stoic theory because it shows that we have the power to make any kind of change, no matter how big or small. We can't control what happens in other people's lives. Life can throw us curveballs and difficult situations that we can't plan for or control, but we can control how we react to them, our thoughts and actions. According to Epictetus and other Stoic philosophers, we are not in charge of life's circumstances, but of ourselves and how we deal with it. This means that we can choose to face every challenge with mindfulness, determination and reason. We can choose how to learn from every experience. Following the Stoic philosophy doesn't mean avoiding change and problems. Instead, it means learning how to use them for growth and a less stressful life. It means being proactive and knowing how to choose how to see and react to the world around us. This is the key to living a meaningful, full and conscious life, even in the hardest times. Have you ever been in a tough situation and realized how important it was to find the good in it? Share your story in the comments below this video. We'd love to hear it before we move on to lesson number three. Let's look into Alex's story. As a college student studying for an important exam, Alex got news that some of the material on the exam had been changed due to a technical issue. At first, he was upset and worried because he had spent a lot of time studying the old material. 
But instead of being angry or worried about the change, he chose to focus on what he could do. He started to research and learn new material diligently. He also talked to the lecturer to better understand the change and how to prepare for the exam. During the time left, Alex practiced and reviewed new material, doing his best to understand and get used to it. This not only gave him a chance to learn something new, but it also helped him feel less stressed and anxious. You must be thinking how Alex was able to get to the exam material so quickly and easily, right? Now let's move on to the next lesson. Life is full of changes that you can't avoid. Everyone goes through changes, whether they're in their daily lives, at work, or because of events happening around the world. Accepting change and looking for the good in it can be hard, especially when it comes as a surprise or isn't wanted, but it can also help you grow as a person and open up new doors for you. When you accept change instead of fighting it, events that could be bad can become sources of strength and hope. Learn about how change works. Always and certainly, understand that change is a normal and always present part of life. Everything changes all the time, from the seasons to technology to relationships to our own growth. The key to adaptability is, to do well in times of change you need to be able to adapt. It lets you change your plans and actions based on new information, which lowers your stress and makes you stronger. Build a positive attitude, focus on opportunities, don't think about what you've lost. Instead, think about what you could gain. There are often new chances to learn, grow and get better when things change. Practice. Being thankful. Think about the good things in your life on a regular basis. Being grateful can help you stop thinking about what's missing and start focusing on what's present and important, which is good for your health. Improve your emotional intelligence. Recognize how you feel. It is normal to worry or not want to change. Allow yourself to feel these feelings without judging them and know that they are normal. Deal with stress. Do things that make you feel good, like exercise, meditation, or skills that you enjoy. During times of change, these habits can help you keep your emotions in check. Get help and connect with other people. Share your experiences, talking to friends, family, or a professional about your thoughts and feelings can help you feel better and see things in a new way. When going through change, social support is very important. Learn from other people. Watch how other people deal with change and get ideas from how they do it. Sometimes, learning from how someone else has handled change well can be very helpful. Take the following steps. Set realistic goals and break down big changes into steps that you can handle. A sense of power and confidence can grow when you set and reach small, attainable goals. Stay willing to learn. You should be willing to learn new things. Having the attitude of a learner can help the change go more smoothly and be more rewarding, turning problems into chances to grow. Accepting change and looking for the good in it is an important skill for mental health and personal growth. People can change how they deal with life's inevitable changes by learning how change works, keeping a positive attitude, improving their emotional intelligence, getting help, and being proactive. Accepting change with hope and strength not only makes the transition easier, but it also brings new opportunities and makes the trip through life more interesting. Lesson number three, focus on your actions instead of external events. Stoicism teaches us a good way to live that we should use every day. Take care of what you can control and stop thinking about things that can't be changed in the outside world. This is important because when we worry too much about outside things like economic crises, broken friendships or changes in our careers, we often feel helpless and afraid. This can lead to unnecessary anxiety and even a mental breakdown. 
We can't change everything that happens in life, but we can change how we react and act in every situation. In other words, we should think about what we can do to make things better. Epicus, a famous ancient Stoic philosopher, said that we should focus on our deeds instead of worrying about what might happen in the outside world. It's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it that matters is a quote that many people stick to in their daily lives. This sentence makes the point that what counts is not what happens to us, but how we respond and react to it. Epictetus taught us that we have complete control over how we react and act in every situation. By focusing on how we react, we grow stronger when things go wrong or change. There are things in our lives that we can't change, but we can always choose how to deal with them. Think about a time when you are facing a big problem. Instead of getting upset and asking why things are going wrong, ask yourself, what can I do to solve this situation? Taking action is very important. Begin by taking small steps, like making a plan, and then taking the first steps. This helps us move forward and makes us feel in charge and sure of ourselves. Stoicism doesn't mean getting rid of all your feelings and reactions to outside events. Instead, it tells us to think about whether our reactions are helpful or not. If a reaction doesn't help solve a problem, we can change it. This takes self-awareness and self-control, so remember that in the journey of life, Focusing on the actions you can take is the key to success and peace. Stoic philosophy gives us good advice that controlling our minds and actions is important for getting through challenges and dealing with life's problems. Lesson number four. Distinguish between what is in control and what is not in control. You are the captain of a boat on a huge ocean and there are big waves all around you. In the middle of all the waves, there is one important thing, the difference between what you can control and what you can't. This is our journey. We have to choose whether to let the great waves of life wash over us or take the wheel and steer our lives in the direction we want. Stoic philosophy helps us figure out what we can control and what we can't, which helps us stay positive, reduces stress, and makes life worth living even when things are hard. In lesson four, we learn that we can only control our thoughts and actions, but not anything else. What does this mean for us when life is hard? When life is hard, we should first focus on our thoughts. Your thoughts give you a chance to choose how you will respond. We have the freedom to choose how we see a situation. Take charge of your thoughts and train them to be positive and patient. This isn't easy, but it's necessary for inner peace. You can also control your actions, which are how we deal with the outside world and solve issues. Think about what you can do to make things better. Write down exact things you can do to make things better. Don't worry about things without doing anything about them. Instead, take a chance and make a change. Most importantly, keep your beliefs and virtues in mind. We can't change the outside world, but we can change how we treat ourselves and others. Being brave and kind will not only make your life more important, but it will also give you the strength to handle any problems that come your way. Accept that death and change are normal parts of life. This may sound harsh, but it's the truth. We can't avoid death, and life is always changing. If we accept that everything changes, we can find peace. Accept that things will change and look for the good in them. This will help you get through hard times and make you stronger and more mature. We may not be able to control everything in life, but we can control how we react to it. By being clear about what we can control and what we can't, we can find peace and live a meaningful life. This is the philosophy of Stoicism, and it can help you through any situation, no matter how difficult it may be. Please like this video if you have learned how to tell the difference between what you can and you need to know what you can control and what you can't control 
in order to do well in life and at work. This difference helps us focus our time and energy more wisely, which lowers our stress and boosts our output. We can better control our responses and make smarter choices when we know and accept the things we can't change. The idea behind this comes from ancient philosophies like Stoicism and is used in current psychology and management. Find the factors that can be changed. Pay attention to the choices, actions and habits that you can directly affect. Your work habits, how you deal with feedback and your attempts to improve yourself are all examples. Take note of things that can't be changed. Be aware of things you can't change, like what other people do, nature disasters or changes in the market. Knowing this helps you avoid worry and frustration that aren't necessary. Turn your attention to internal control. Focus on things that are inside you, like your mood, effort and mindset. This gives you the power to deal with problems and issues in the outside world in a healthy way. Create ways to deal with stress. Make plans for how to handle things you can't change. This can include making plans for what to do in case something goes wrong, learning how to deal with stress, and being open to change. Learn how to accept and adapt to change. Accept that some things are just naturally hard to predict. Accepting things as they are can help you change more easily and stay strong when bad things happen. In short, knowing what you can control and what you can't lets you focus your efforts more wisely, which leads to better results and a higher level of personal well-being. You can face problems with more clarity and confidence if you focus on things you can control, accept the things you can't, and come up with flexible solutions. Lesson number five. Accept death as a natural part of life. Accepting death as a normal part of life comes from a lot of different religious, intellectual and cultural backgrounds. It stresses how inevitable death is and urges people to live meaningful lives without worrying about their own deaths. Realizing that death is a normal part of life can help people deal with it in a healthier way, which can lead to a more fulfilling and balanced life. How to understand impermanence In life, everything changes. Recognizing that everything, including life itself, changes over time, helps people enjoy the present and become more grateful. Getting rid of fear and anxiety. Accepting death can help you feel less afraid and anxious about the unknown. It frees people from being paralyzed by the fear of death and lets them focus on living their lives fully. Getting people to live meaningful lives Knowing that you are going to die can motivate people to put what really counts first, like building stronger relationships, following their passions, and making the world a better place. Getting people to grow emotionally and spiritually. Facing the truth of death can help you grow deeply emotionally and spiritually. It makes you think about yourself, become more self-aware, and learn more about your beliefs and ideals. Helping people grieve and accept. Seeing death as a normal part of life can help you deal with your grief when someone you care about dies. It lets people accept their feelings and move toward healing and acceptance. Adopting the idea that death is a normal part of being human can help people live fuller lives filled with mindfulness, thanks, and a stronger sense of purpose. We all know that at some point, we will all die. We don't get to choose when or how we die. It's just a natural and inevitable part of life. This fact can't be ignored, and it presents a big challenge to the soul. When life is hard and unstable, the stoic philosophy of death becomes very important and can give strong support. People often fear death because it means the end of something and the unknown. But Stoicism teaches that death is not the end. It is also a part of life. It's like an unavoidable circle. Birth, life, death, and then a new life begins. 
If we understand this, we can focus on how we live our lives instead of worrying about losing loved ones or what tomorrow will bring. We can find joy in every moment and find meaning in things that don't seem to have any. Accepting death isn't just a way to get rid of fear. It's also a chance to live a meaningful life, enjoy every moment and find inner peace. Imagine that we didn't have to worry about losing loved ones or the unknown future. Instead, we could use Stoic philosophy to find joy in every moment, give our lives meaning and get stronger when we face problems. In addition, we learn to manage our thinking and accept that things change all the time. Moto Mori, which means remember that you will die, is one of the most important ideas in Stoic philosophy. Its meaning is not only to remind us to accept death as a part of life, but also to help us really understand the true value and meaning of life. Accepting memento mori means that we accept the truth that life is short. No one can live forever. This makes every moment more valuable. We can't waste time or put things off forever. Death doesn't wait. This makes us want to live a meaningful life, to treasure every moment and to ask ourselves, am I living the best life possible? Mori also helps us focus on the present. Worrying about the future, like being afraid of death or feeling like we have to do well, can take away our joy in the present. Instead, we can think about what we can control, our actions, decisions and way of life right now. We can give our daily lives, no matter how small, value and meaning. Accepting death as a normal part of life makes us less afraid, less anxious and better able to deal with problems. We don't fear failures or problems because we know that life doesn't promise us anything. In conclusion, Moto Mori is not just a slogan, it's a deep philosophy of life that not only makes life more valuable, but also helps us deeply appreciate the value of each present moment. It says that death is not the end of the journey, but an inevitable part of life. We truly understand the value of life when we learn to enjoy each moment, take on challenges and get better in every area of your life. When bad things happen out of the blue, it's important to learn how to calm down and find peace within. Watch as the economy changes in difficult ways and experience how unpredictable life can be. But don't forget that we always have control over the most powerful thing, our own abilities. We can deal with the fantasy of death, so we should be able to deal with life as well. Life is always changing, but it's important to be able to adapt and get stronger from each challenge. We can't change the future, but we can change how we face it. That's why I want to encourage you to spread the Stoic philosophy and the message of how to deal with anxiety in this hard world. Please like and comment to share your thoughts, and especially click the share button to get this message to more people. If you're not already a member of the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Together, we can build a strong, united, and supportive community. Thank you for supporting our channel. Last but not least, I want to tell you that no matter what happens in life, you have the power to make the best of it. Be thankful for your life.